Hello, Story Hour. How are you today? This is a virtual story that we post to YouTube every week for the Sandal Public Library. I'm Tricia. Welcome. We're going to be talking about and reading about the sun today. It's been raining a lot. It looks like it might be a little more sunny today. We hope so. It's always good to see the sun. We need it, right? We've talked about that too, how we need the sun, how it makes our plants grow. Let's see, I'm going to switch my cameras. Today is the first story hour in June. We'll be doing two more recorded story times, and then we'll be moving into summer reading. And all our programs will be live at the library, live and in person. All right, let's switch the cameras. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to start with a nonfiction book today. We've talked a little bit about that, how fiction books somebody makes up out of their imagination. And it might tell us real things, but it's a book from their imagination. This is a nonfiction book. It's going to talk about the sun and the facts about the sun. This book was written by T Steve Tomek, and illustrations are by Collar, Carla Golembi, and it's a National Geographic book. Now, this is a kind of wide book, so I'll have to make sure I can get the pictures in there. It happens every morning. You jump out of bed, and as you wipe the sleep from your eyes, you see it. The sun rises in the sky, and a new day begins. Even on cloudy days, the sun gives us light. What is the sun? And why is it so bright? What makes it rise and set and moves across the sky? How big is the sun and how far away is it from earth? To find these answers, just follow the sun. The sun is a star. It is our star. When most people think about stars, they imagine those tiny dots of light that can be seen at nighttime. The reason our sun seems so big and bright and the other stars look like little dots is that all the other stars are much further away. The sun is the closest star to the earth. If you could travel far into space and get close to other stars, they would look as big as our sun does. Our cars driving one year, 40 years, 80 years, 110 years. Even though the sun is our closest star, it's still very far away from Earth. The sun is about 93 million miles from Earth. If you had to drive 93 million miles at 60 miles per hour, it would take you almost 177 years to get there. And that's without stopping to even eat a snack. That is very far away. Because the sun is so far away from Earth, it doesn't look that big, but really it's gigantic. If you could measure the sun across its center, you would find that it is about 865 thousand miles across. That means that you could put 109 Earths all the way across the center of the sun. Wow, that's really big. Now remember, nonfiction books have lots of information and I don't always read you everything on the page. The sun is not made of rock like our Earth is. It is mostly made of two hot gases, and they are called hydrogen and helium. Helium gas is what makes your balloons float. It is lighter than air. Oxygen gas is also light. And if you bring oxygen or hydrogen, sorry, hydrogen near a fire, it would explode. Even though it may look as if it's on fire, the sun is not burning. Explosions similar to nuclear bombs make the gas hot. 
the surface is the sun is very hot, like 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's super hot. Because the sun is so bright, you would never look right at it. Even if you were wearing sunglasses, it could hurt your eyes. When scientists study the sun, they usually don't look at it directly. They put special filters on their telescopes and then they use cameras to take pictures of the sun. Did you know the library has a telescope? You can borrow it like you do a book. The sun is covered by dark and light patches. These are called sunspots. Scientists think that sunspots are kind of storm on the sun. The sunspots look dark because they are cooler than the rest of the surface of the sun. Wow, that must be why when we see pictures of it, it has different colors. And that's usually why when we make a sun, we put different colors on it, like yellows, reds, oranges. And it does, those are the colors of fire. Have you seen how the sun seems to move across the sky? The sun seems to rise in the east and set in the west. Many years ago, people thought the sun traveled around the earth. That's because they thought the earth was the center of everything. But today we know it's really the earth that is moving, not the sun. Even though we can't feel it, earth is always spinning. Earth spins on its axis like a big ball. Sometimes you're on the side that faces the sun, and sometimes you're on the side that faces away from the sun. When you are on the side that faces the sun, the sun is shining on you and it's daytime. When the place you are at turns away from the sun, it gets dark and then it's nighttime. It takes the earth 24 hours to make one complete spin. When it spins all the way around, that's a whole day. So we have daytime and nighttime. When you wake up again, it's daytime again. Besides spinning, our earth is also moving around the sun in an oval shape. That's called its orbit. It takes the earth 365 days, that's one whole year, to get all the way around the sun. Look at how it's spinning. And as it spins, it's rotating and that's what makes our days and our nights. During the summer, the sun appears to be high overhead in the sky. If you watch a clock, you'll see that there are more hours of daylight in the summer than in the winter. During the winter, the sun appears to be closer to the horizon. The horizon is where the sky and the ground meet. And in the winter, there are fewer hours of daylight. Oh, look. There's all the planets that rotate around the sun. And our Earth isn't the only planet that rotates around the sun. There are other planets like Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn. The sun is the center of our neighborhood in space. We call our neighborhood the solar system. So all of these planets that rotate around the sun are called the solar system. Without the sun, most things would not be able to live here on earth. Without sunlight, plants could not grow. Without plants, people and other animals would not have any food. The sun also keeps the earth warm. When sunlight hits the rocks and water that are on Earth's surface, some of the light is soaked up and turns into heat. Without the heat, we would be very cold. Our sun is truly special. It gives us light, it gives us life, and the sun is the biggest thing in our solar system. You might even say it's our star attraction. That's a great book. This book I borrowed from the Plastow Public Library and it's called Sun. You could borrow that too. You can put it on reserve and then they'll send it to the library and you can take it out. This is from our library. This book is written by Charles, 
Charles Ginga, and the illustrations are by Laura Watson. And the title of the book is Sunshine Brightens Springtime. Ooh, that's a lot of suns. This is a cute little rhyming book. Sunshine spreads across the lake. Sunshine warms us when we wake. Sunshine finds a bunny's home. Sunshine melts an ice cream cone. Sunshine melts away the snow. Sunshine helps the garden grow. Sunshine makes a shadow flower. Do you see the flower is in front of the sun? So the sunlight is shining this way and it makes the shadow of the flower on the ground. Have you ever done that with your shadow? It's fun to stand. If you have a driveway that's tarred, it's fun to stand on the driveway and trace your shadow at different times of the day because as the sun moves, your shadows get longer. Sunshine shadows grow each hour. Sunshine beams through rows of trees. Sunshine sparkles on the leaves. Sunshine glimmers on the grain. The grain is growing in the field. Sunshine gleams upon the pain. Sunshine hides behind the clouds. Sunshine brightens up the crowd. Sunshine follows April showers. Sunshine dries the rain soaked flowers. Sunshine warms each afternoon. Sunshine glows upon the moon. Sunshine brings new life each spring. Sunshine shines on everything. That's um, some information about the sun. Remember your sunblock when it's really sunny. You don't want to get a sunburn. Let's see. This book is kind of cool. I found this in our library. A handful of sunshine. But look at that picture. Is that sun? Is that the sun? Do you know what kind of plant that is? We've talked about how we need the sun to grow plants. Now this is a really big book. I'm going to have trouble showing you the pictures, I think. Now can you tell what it is? A Handful of Sunshine by Melanie Eclair, and this is a Ragged Bears book. I'll move the book so that you can see the pictures. You might not be able to see the words. This is Tilda, and Tilda loves growing sunflowers. Did you know there was a plant called a sunflower? These are the seeds that she bought with her money. The best time to start growing sunflowers is in the spring. So in March, Tilda begins to dig. She's working the soil. She prepares a bed, a flower bed, by clearing the weeds and making a hole for each seed. Then she takes the seeds out of the packet. Can you see what she's doing? She took the seeds out of the packet and now she's very gently putting them into the dirt. One by one, she pops a seed in each hole that she's dug in her new flower bed. Suddenly, Tilda jumps up in surprise. <gasps> Uh-oh, I wonder what she saw in the garden. 
a baby toad has come to see what she's doing. That's a teeny tiny toad. She carefully puts him under a big leaf. Now it's time to water her seeds. Remember we talked about what seeds need to grow? You need dirt, soil, you need water and sunlight. So you need sunlight to grow a sunflower. There it is. After several weeks, Tilda's seeds have grown into strong, healthy plants. And every day they get bigger. Look at, they're almost as tall as Tilda. And bigger. She's standing on a chair. That's how big this tall plant is. And bigger. These must be giant sunflowers. <gasps> Until they reach up to the sky. Tilda's seeds are now beautiful sunflowers. That sunflower is very tall. At the end of the summer, Tilda climbs a ladder to pick the head of the fattest, biggest flower. Do you know why you pick the sunflowers? Have you ever grown one? Tilda pulls the seeds out of the old flower and now she has her own sunflower seeds to grow for next year. Let's go back to the beginning where she had seeds in her hand. See the seeds right here? You can plant the seeds, you can save them for next, next year, or you can eat them. Have you ever had sunflower seeds? They're very tasty. People like to eat them and so do animals. Birds like them, squirrels and chipmunks like them. I'm going to read this little book. I just bought this book, special for this week. I wanted to read an Eric Carle book. I'm sad that we won't have any new Eric Carle books anymore. He has this book called Where is the Sun? And this is an easy reader book. So the words are very big and very simple for when children are starting to read. This is a Simon Spotlight book. It's written and illustrated by Eric Carle. And the title is, Where is the Sun? I was happy to find this one so I could read one of his books this week. Where is the sun? Do you see any sun on that picture? I'm gonna move the camera over a little bit, so. I do not see the sun in that picture. The sun is up high. The sun is down low. The sun moves each day across the sky. The sun warms the sea those dolphins playing. The sun warms the town. I love how Eric Carl makes the pictures of his books. Oh, the sun warms you and the sun warms me. The sun is out. <gasps> that rabbit hiding in its burrow. The sun is hiding, hiding behind the cloud. The sun and rain help the plants sprout. We were just talking about that. To grow, plants need to be planted in the dirt and they need rain and they need sun. And often they need bees to pollinate them. The sun is bright. The sun is Dim. Dim means not very bright. So bright, dim, like you were starting to turn off your light. 
The sun is not out at night. What's out at night? There is the sun. Look at all those sun colors. What colors do you see? This is a great beginner reader book. I really like it. I think maybe the library needs a copy. All right, I'm gonna switch the camera now so I can say goodbye. I will see you next week. Next week, we're gonna talk about caterpillars and butterflies. Uh, the week after that, we're gonna talk about Father's Day and that will be the last of our recorded sessions. After that, we'll be doing crafts on Wednesdays at the library and we'll be doing story times on Thursdays, both at 10 o'clock. So have a great week. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.